The Evolution of a Bad Boy Written by Susanna Thompson Narrated by Sarah Sampino Chapter 14 Celeste hadn't expected Dylan to be so attentive to her after he got what he wanted. Even though they hadn't gone all the way yet, he had already succeeded in seducing her. She had thought that he would stop flirting with her now that he knew how hot she was for him. He surprised her by sending her a sweet text message the next day. I'm thinking of you. Hope you have a great day with your family. She had woken up that morning feeling ashamed of herself for her behavior the previous night. So his message brightened her mood immensely. Celeste texted him back that she was thinking of him too and wished him a great day also. She was smiling as she got ready to visit her brother and his family. Her parents asked about her date with Dylan, and she told them about Jenna and her family's restaurant. Celeste was glad to have an interesting story to tell them, and she had no problem keeping her mind off what had happened after dinner while talking to her parents. When they arrived at her brother's apartment, the baby was, naturally, the center of attention. Allie was still too little to be able to do much of anything, but Celeste was happy just to hold her and tell her how cute she was. The little girl stared at her with clueless innocence, and Celeste laughed in delight. Her parents were discussing babysitting Allie when her sister-in-law, Cora, returned to work in a couple of weeks after her maternity leave ended. She was an engineer, just like Billy. They had met in college and discovered that they had the same major. Now both their jobs paid well, and they were saving up to buy a house. Celeste's mom was a retired school teacher, and she was thrilled to be able to spend so much time with her first grandchild. They all enjoyed their visit, even though Billy embarrassed Celeste when he joked that she wasn't allowed to date until he approved of her new boyfriend. She wasn't sure what her brother would think of Dylan, but she knew that her parents wished she would end up with someone who was similar to her, as Cora was to Billy. After she arrived home from her visit with her family, Celeste called Lily to find out how she enjoyed her date with Alex. Lily, who was already naturally upbeat, sounded positively giddy with happiness. She'd had a wonderful time with Alex, and he had kissed her at the end of their evening. He had already asked her to go out with him again next weekend. Celeste was glad for Lily, but she felt a little blue as she listened to her innocent gushing over how sweet Alex was. Her relationship with Dylan seemed so much more complicated by comparison. She wished that her biggest concern was what outfit to wear when they went out on a date. Things had escalated so quickly between them, but she couldn't put all the blame on Dylan. She was the one who had told him to take her to his house this last time, knowing full well that things were likely to go too far again. Celeste couldn't deny that she was extremely attracted to Dylan, but did she feel anything else for him? She had never imagined herself as the kind of person who could be involved in a relationship that was just physical. At the beginning, she'd seen Dylan as just a good-looking guy and had a low opinion of him. Her opinion of him had changed as she got to know him. He was more interesting than she had imagined at first, but he was also easier to relate to than she ever would have suspected. Beneath the player image was a regular person with dreams about the future. She had found him surprisingly easy to talk to, and she enjoyed spending time with him beyond how he made her body feel. Did that mean that she liked him as more than a sex partner? As for sex, what was she going to do about it? She could only see three options. She could insist on spending all their dates in public, break up with Dylan, or have sex with Dylan. She wasn't going to fool herself into denying that's where they were headed. They had gone so far already that there wasn't much further to go. She had to make a decision before next weekend, and she wasn't going to falter from it once it was decided. Dylan was waiting for her by her locker on Monday. I missed you. It's only been one day since you saw me, she said, but she beamed with pleasure at his words. That's too long. He gave her a sweet kiss. Mmm, you always taste good. The heated look he gave her would have been enough to set her pulse racing without the sultry memory his words brought to mind. 
She tried to push the intimate image from her thoughts. How was your day? It was okay. I worked and then I hung out with my mom. She wants to meet you sometime this week if you have time after school. Maybe I could give you a ride one day, Dylan said. You told your mom about me? This pleased her greatly. Of course I told her about my girlfriend. He smiled at her. How about Friday? We can go straight from my house to the Greek festival and grab dinner there. He was still acting like a real boyfriend, and Celeste made her first decision of the week. She wasn't going to break up with Dylan. The rest would have to be decided later, but she was going to meet his mom and go on another date with him. Yeah, that sounds fun. Great, I'll let mom know. Anyway, I made you a copy of our new song. He handed her the CD before giving her another quick kiss and taking off for class. She had a student council meeting after school, and the battle of the bands was on the agenda. Andrew was cool towards her, but civil enough to work with her on what needed to be done. Celeste surreptitiously watched the way Olivia looked at him and wondered how she had never noticed it before. What a tangled mess it all was, but there was nothing she could do to set it right. Celeste did her workout right away when she arrived home. She always liked to get it done before dinner if she could, but today she also had nervous energy to burn. Her mother shook her head at her and remarked that it was a nice day. Celeste didn't care, because she liked to walk on the treadmill while listening to music. That way she could zone out and not have to watch where she was going. It was nice sometimes to stop thinking and just be. She was sweaty after she was done, but she felt good. Her shower refreshed her, and she was able to relax during dinner. She listened to Dylan's new song after she finished her homework. Hearing his voice had an immediate effect on her. Besides the sensual power of the song, knowing that he had written it about her was even more exciting. How many girls had songs written about them? She had to admit that he had a talent for writing very sexy songs that weren't explicit. The music fit the lyrics perfectly to invoke a sexually charged mood. Dylan and Jenna worked together flawlessly as songwriting partners. Celeste could understand why they wouldn't risk ruining that by becoming romantically involved. Her thoughts again turned to her own relationship with Dylan. She didn't know how to categorize what was between them. It wasn't progressing like a normal relationship, even though he was acting like a real boyfriend. They were supposed to get emotionally close before she felt comfortable with the physical stuff, but it was happening in reverse. He was getting past her inhibitions, and everything felt so natural with him physically. She would have slapped any other guy who tried to put his hands where she had allowed Dylan to touch her. Celeste decided to try and slow things down. She wouldn't be alone with him at his house this weekend, and she would see how he reacted to that. In the meantime, her parents were surprised when she told them that she was meeting Dylan's mom on Friday. It worked like a charm in making them agree to Dylan driving her to school. She could see how clever he had been in going about it this way. They were also pleased to hear that he was taking her to the Greek festival. She knew they had feared that all her dates with him would consist of going to wild parties. He was wearing jeans and a t-shirt when he picked her up on Friday morning, and Celeste was dressed the same way. She was pretty sure that she didn't have to impress his mom by dressing up. Going straight to Dylan's house after school made it feel more like the weekend than her usual Friday afternoon routine. She saw that he resembled his mom, and she could see why she had been a model. The woman was still beautiful, with the same dark eyes and brunette hair as her son. Celeste deduced that the only reason she hadn't been more successful in the modeling world was her height. She wasn't very tall, and that had probably been what prevented her from making a career out of it. Ms. Thomas greeted Celeste with much more enthusiasm than her parents had shown Dylan. I kept the last name after the divorce, but I'm not Mrs. anymore, she explained. Dylan Thomas was a poet, and I had to give my son that first name since he already got the last name from his father. She was one of those people who immediately told you odd details about herself. Celeste found her to be a friendly and charming person. She remarked that Celeste's last name 
Winters, was delightful. It makes me think of a serene landscape blanketed by snow. Dylan smiled at her with affection. Mom has the heart of a poet. So do you, but you just put your poems to music, she said. How do you like your love poem, Celeste? Celeste was confused at first, and then blushed when she realized that Ms. Thomas was talking about ecstasy. It wasn't explicit, but it was racy enough for her never to reveal to her own mother that Dylan had written it about her. He must have a much more open relationship with his mom. It's not a love song, Dylan hastened to deny. It's the same type of song as Here With You, and you never called that a love song. That one is all about the attraction, and this one is all about the person. You did everything but put her name in it. Only a person who makes an impact on you can inspire you. She smiled at Celeste. You've made a big impression on Dylan. He couldn't wait to tell me what you said the first time you heard him sing. Mom. It was the first time Celeste had ever seen Dylan look embarrassed. Celeste was relieved to talk about something else. He's really talented. Even my friend said that he's a rock star, and she hardly ever compliments anyone. He had the chance to be in a new boy band last year, but he turned it down. That's when he decided to form his own band. Most people wouldn't have passed up an opportunity like that, but Dylan believes in his dream. His mom looked at him with a mix of pride and wonder. Celeste was stunned by this revelation. You never told me that. How did that happen? He looked embarrassed again. Mom sent a DVD of me singing to a record company. I have a friend who works at a big label, and she got somebody to watch it. They wanted him to join their new boy band, but he refused. As an aside, Miss Thomas named the band, and Celeste's eyes went wide. But you would have made it big already, Celeste said. Isn't that what you want? I want to do it my way, with my own kind of music instead of playing up some teen image. I'm in it for the music. He had said something like that before, when he had told her that he wasn't in it for the groupies. They sat talking with his mom for about an hour, and then Dylan decided that it was time to leave. Celeste said goodbye to Ms. Thomas and followed Dylan outside, but he opened the garage instead of heading for his car. This is my chance to give you a ride on my bike, without your parents freaking. I don't know. She realized this would mean returning to his house to get the car before he drove her home. Come on, he urged. It's a perfect day for it. We might not get another chance until spring. The truth was that she had wanted to go for a ride since the first time she saw his motorcycle. Okay, she said with unconcealed excitement. He had an extra helmet for her, and he helped her put it on. Then he swung his leg over the bike and put on his own helmet. He motioned for her to approach the motorcycle and told her where to rest her feet. She climbed on behind him and wrapped her arms around his waist. Her heart leapt up into her throat as they took off down the street. She had never done anything that felt so dangerous and thrilling. Did you like it? Dylan asked after they pulled into the parking lot at the festival. Yeah, it was fun. She took off her helmet and grinned at him. They walked around the festival and tried the delicious food. There were also many wares for sale beneath rows of tents. After wandering leisurely through them, Dylan told her that he had a surprise for her. He led her to an open area where a crowd had gathered. She saw a group of dancers dressed in traditional Greek costumes and spotted Jenna among them. Music began to play, and the dancers delighted the audience with their lively steps. Celeste watched in amazement as all the dancers moved in unison without looking at their feet. It was a joyful dance, and she was swept up in the happy atmosphere. She clapped with enthusiasm when the performance ended. Dylan pulled her aside and began to show her some simple steps. The music began again, and the audience was apparently invited to join this time. Celeste and Dylan found a place at the end of the line, and she followed his lead as she began to dance. She started to get the hang of it, but she kept a careful watch on her feet. Celeste glanced at Dylan and saw that he moved with ease. 
By the end of the dance, she was having a blast and laughing in delight. They found Jenna, and Celeste bombarded her with compliments. She laughed when Celeste said she wished that she was Greek. How much ouzo has she had? Jenna asked Dylan. Ouzo? Celeste questioned. It's an alcoholic drink, Jenna explained. Very potent. You don't even feel it at first, Dylan added. It sneaks up on you. I know the feeling, Celeste said wryly. So, have you been drinking? Jenna wagged her finger at them. No, I was talking about something else. I, uh... She couldn't think of a single suitable thing to say that would explain that comment. Your culture is so fun! She was beginning to wish that she really had drunk some ouzo. Then she wouldn't be responsible for what she said. Thanks, Jenna said, laughing again. I'm glad you're having fun. She was. Celeste was having a great time on what was not at all a typical date. This was the last place that she had expected the school player to bring her. It wasn't what would be considered cool, but it didn't take away from his appeal. In fact, it only enhanced his desirability. He did what he wanted to do without being trapped by a certain image. If he felt like dancing to Greek folk music, that's what he did. Celeste admired his spontaneity. She was in a tremendously good mood when they left the festival. This time, she became aware of how sexy this mode of travel was as she pressed her body against Dylan. He must have thought the same thing, because he kissed her as soon as they dismounted from the bike and took their helmets off. That was a hot ride, Celeste. His hands skimmed her hips. Yeah, she agreed. Come inside, and I'll give you a better ride than that. Oh, the things his sexy voice did to her? She was seriously tempted. Another time, she promised. I need to go home now. Okay. He obliged her request without complaining and drove her home in his car. He gave her a brief kiss, but he placed his hand on her knee. I want to write more songs about you. Good night, Celeste. Good night, Dylan. She waited for him to let go of her knee before getting out of the car. He watched her until she opened her front door and then backed out of her driveway. Celeste had managed to triumph over her hormones tonight, but it was only one battle in an ongoing war.